So in the next five years, what would you say is the biggest challenge for the message group? In the next five years? Mm. We've started a business called Canity, which is online training. And it's a really simple system. We've got to work out the secret to getting that uh, exploding. It's going well now, it's trickling along nicely, and we're adding new content all the time. Uh, we just have to work out how we get that across to the maximum audience. And because I quite love in the mornings when I wake up and I see these order come in from UK and America. They're our two major markets at the moment. And all of Kennedy's um, content is in Australian accent, it's with Australian spelling. And I think, well, maybe this is going to offend the Americans, but we've already had feedback. It adds an element of spice to it that they don't normally get. And they're obviously paying attention to it and it's working. So that is my challenge. How do I get that uh, at the same level as messages on hold? Because that, that took a, a number of years, obviously, to get up to where we are now. Okay, so that's the next big thing from a global perspective. Yep. yep. Why is that your biggest challenge? I. I really want, because with messages on hold, um, there's probably, our, our market is probably at the highest now. We're, we're, there's not much more growth unless we can uh, pinch a couple of huge contracts which we're working on at the moment. But I, I see the ability to set up a business that doesn't take staff, that just generates uh, a, a great training product in return for a regular income is something that we need to do. So much is being done over the internet and to be able to automate something like this, it's an exciting challenge for us. Sounds very exciting. The diversification in your business I found quite interesting. I mean, I mentioned at the beginning, you've, you're in a lot of different things. Has that diversification come organically or have you purposely gone into those areas, uh, you know, such as an, an example perhaps would be the, the, de the property development? as an example. That is not like in 1999 I decided in 2006 I would do it. What we do is we tend to act quickly on things and try them out. So um, with, with Canity it happened because of a couple of things. I thought, hey, we should be doing this. Mm -hmm. And our research over a month or so suggested there was a gap in the market, so we went for it. Um, with our property development in Queensland, uh, that was a, an off-the-cuff thing of mine. I thought, right, this is where I think the market's going there. And after speaking to a number of people, I think it's a good investment. Um, two of them were. Two of them I probably could have done without. Um, with the music side of the business, with uh, the Groove Gallery, we realised that um, because of copyright law in Australia, people had, and, and all around the world, they weren't able to legally play for free music in their business or on hold, um, or background music in the lift, whatever, without paying a royalty. And there was big money in some of these instances. So we set up a standalone business that would provide non-copyrighted but good quality music for those certain industries. It had the, the added plus for us that we used that music for our on hold production. So really, it owed us nothing. We would have paid the money just for the music ourselves, but the fact that we're getting revenue from it, uh, and it hasn't been a big part of our business, but it's certainly been worth doing. So that's an interesting part of acquiring a new service and, and using it in two ways. Businesses are, it's tough out there at the moment. It's never been easy. I don't know when it's ever been, maybe in the mining boom, but I've never had it easy. <laughs> it's the industry you chose, Pat. Yeah. What, did you, what would you say to businesses that are, cons that are sort of a bit against the wall and they're, they're a little bit lost for ideas? They know they've got to diversify mm -hmm. and finding another revenue stream uh, look, sure, you've done sounds that like you do it quite easily and naturally. But if if you didn't have that ability, and you, how would is there anything you would give to a business to let them think about how they could diversify more appropriately? Diversify. Um, I'm probably not much in that respect. More so, how do you how do you stand yourself out from the crowd? That's what I think. So many businesses are the same as their competitors, mm. and that. And then it gets down to a price point. And I would never want to go into a business just selling on price. So for me, it's all about how do I stand myself out? How do I do it so much better? Have a, look, you're gonna have a good product. You have to have a good product, that's a given. What's my marketing like? What's the feeling like that the person has when they do business with me? Uh, are they happy to go out and promote me to their customers? Because I'm a lazy guy. I don't want to spend a fortune marketing. I want my customers 
to market for me. And if I do the right thing, they'll happily do it. Mm. Sometimes I have to push them a little bit and ask them, but, and that's the segment in one of these Kennedy series is dealing with happy customers. And I, it only came to me when my general manager said, yeah, we've got dealing with the difficult customers. What about happy customers? Well, what are we worried about them for? No, but this sort of thing, I thought, yeah, getting referrals. How do you get them to be ambassadors? So there's probably nine different segments on that, and I love that. So even that's even a, a, a nice way to look at it, uh, thinking about how you can stand out and be a, a really significant point of difference to your, to your competitor will open up opportunities for you as you go through. It does. That's essentially what you're saying. It's, it's, it's a proven fact. Mm.